I'm Tom Hardy and I'm walking. Walking, walking, walking. Oh, look at me walk. Look at my stride. Look at my stride. Tom Hardy. Tom damn Hardy. Walking through. There, it's walking closer up. Oh, I'm walking away from the camera now. Oh, there's other people walking. They don't walk like me. Walk, walk, walk. Now I'm walking some more. Okay. Walking past everyone, I've had enough. Hello and welcome to One Watched. My name is Sam McKinstry and uh, I am Jewish. Um, I wear glasses and I write films. I write all of our films. No one else does anything. I write them all. No one helps. Um, this is Tom. He uh, edits. Elements of this are true. Elements Hi. are not. <laughs> You're not Sam McKinstry. I am Sam McKinstry. I'm Sam McKinstry. No, I'm Sam McKinstry. You're this Tom is my Hinchman. house. Right now we're recording in my house. I recording the one watched. I don't write all the scripts. I write all the first drafts. Yeah, and I edit all the. Uh, I no Tom uh, Tom McKinstry here here right here. I edit these videos where we talk about films we've watched. You do not edit. I edit these videos. No, you're you... Tom. You edit the films. I'm Sam. I edit these videos. That's not what. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're mixing up the names. No, I'm Sam. I have a you know very nice girlfriend called Sarah, and I live in this house. You sound great. You yeah. sound very handsome. But why yeah. are you doing this? And why is the first thing you say after my name is that I'm Jewish? Why is that my defining well, I come factor? For, I come, I'm not even that I come good a Jew. I come from a Jewish Each family. Person. I am a chosen one. <sighs> it's very important that people know that I am a chosen one. Well, I come from a half Jewish family. My well, dad is not. Yes, but your mom is, you know, my mum is Jewish. And that's the important part. Okay. Being yeah, well, that is true. The important part in yeah. Jewish religion. That's, where, that's um, where I get my blood. Okay. How long is this going on for? Well, you know, once everyone realises that I'm Sam, then we can continue. Okay, you'll... Okay. Ow. Um, <laughs> Alright, welcome to One Watch. We watch things, we talk about it. Sam and Tom. Yeah. Don't know which one I'm meant to be. <laughs> Sam and Tom. Uh, right, I have one thing to talk about and another thing I'm saving for a future episode. Cool. I believe you have one thing. Yeah. But I also want to... Uh, retrospectively go back to one because you've now watched it yeah and I want to talk about that but we'll leave that to the end because that might be like breaking all ground and not as interesting yeah. would you like to start or would you like me to start I'll, I'll start because I'm Sam okay Sam <laughs> <laughs> you handsome devil start please he's yeah. not Sam I'm Sam and oh. I may or may not have a massive penis or a tiny penis who knows <laughs> I've made comments to the <laughs> regularly <laughs> So I've been watching uh, something called Sneaky Pete, which is yeah. about a guy who's definitely called Pete. Mm-hmm. Um, can I um, can I can I change that, Sam? It's like yeah. uh, you haven't watched Sneaky Pete. You finally watched something called yeah. Sneaky Pete because about I would say over a year, yeah, over a year you have more often than not gone. Yeah, wait for Sneaky Pete. They're supposed to be doing Sneaky Pete. It's on Amazon, right? Yeah, I think it was a trailer or a pilot. They, they did the pilot and they released that mid-2015. Right, because since then, like, it Sneaky was, Pete... It was, was meant to be early 2016 that they said yeah. they were doing it. You know, there was, like, uh, this ha- has happened to us, right? Uh, Ruth Langrick, actress, fine, right? We didn't meet... We knew about her years before we met her because she's, like, best friends with Grace Fisher and other actor friends yeah. of ours. So when we finally met her, it's like not meeting a stranger and then you have to, like, change because you might have a preconceived notion of this person. Yeah. Um, that's how I feel about this show. Because of the pilot, I feel like, oh, I know Sneaky Pete. I've watched Sneaky Pete. I haven't ever watched yeah. Sneaky Pete. I have no fucking idea what it's about. But you have banged on and on and on like a drum. Someone banging a drum a lot, haven't you, Sam? Haven't you? Yeah. Don't stop. Yeah. Anyway, carry on. Sorry. Sneaky Pete. Yeah. So, uh, Sneaky Pete. Yeah. It's got the uh, guy who plays Phoebe's Wolver in it. He's got uh, a really good name, but I can't never remember it. The guy who they kill with the overdose in Saving Private Ryan. I think so. Yeah, I love yeah. that guy. Yeah. He's a great um, actor. Oh, he was in, he's in loads of things. Yeah. Uh, he was in, um, uh, right, Fern Gully, but in space. Uh, 3D Avatar. He was the business guy in Avatar. Fair enough. I don't know why that's the role I pick out of him, <laughs> of all the roles he's done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's like the main character, and mm-hmm. then it's got um, Heisenberg. I forgot his name now. Brian Walter Cranston. White. Brian Cranston, yeah. Right. It's got him in it. You didn't even it's say like, Walter White, you said Heisenberg, and yeah. I still. <laughs> um, and he's like the bad guy. Right. Again. He's not a main character, but he's a main character because he's the bad guy. Like, right. He's not focused yeah, yeah. on. Um, so, yeah, um, basically, spoilers for like the first five minutes of 
the first episode, I think, maybe. I feel beginning of episodes and trailers are fair game. Yeah. Anything further than that, I would ask you to refrain from. Because yeah. I'll probably have to watch this just because the amount of you banged on about yeah. it. Like, um, so basically, um, Pete, who's not called Pete. Is he sneaky? He's sneaky. Okay. Uh, is a con man. Right. Um, and he's been in prison. Uh, he gets released from prison. So was he not a very good con man if he was arrested in prison or... That's explained later, so right. I'm not going right. to okay. say. Okay. Um, but he's in prison. Um, and he's got like this cellmate who is... I think he maybe has a learning disorder or he's like had some p- mental problem or something that's happened to him. A mental health illness yeah. or a learning disability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he talks about, like, he talks to Pete, or I think he's called Marius. I think his, his proper name is meant to be Marius. Mm. Um, and basically talks about his old family that he's not seen for, since he was like 12 years old and mm. they were this rich family that lived in this place. Mm. So... Marius leaves and uh, decides, I'm just going to steal Pete's life and Pete's plan to so I can make money. Um, after, uh, and he's already got this plan, and then, uh, but when he gets out, his brother comes to meet him. And this is all like the first five minutes, which is why I say spoilers for the first five minutes. Uh, his brother comes and meets him, and turns out his brother is. Uh, very much known to the bad guy Heisenberg. Right. Um, and Heisenberg is not fucking happy with Marius or his brother, but kind of likes his brother. Right. Uh, and basically, the whole like season is about uh, Marius pretending to be Pete in order to get money to pay off the bad guy that he owes him money because he owes him money. Right. Uh, so that he doesn't kill his brother. Right. Okay. Um, because Marius is very good at running away. Okay. Is it episodic or storyline? It is storyline. Right. Uh, I think like there's occasional moments of episodic bits, but it's pretty much storyline. Cool. And tonally, where are we at? Like, are we serious? Are we mm-hmm. sort of fun and whimsical? Are we quirky? It's... Are we gritty? It's serious, sort of borderline gritty... But, like, there's moments that just kind of... Maybe it's just me. They just seem funny. Yeah. Because of, like, sort of what I know as the audience versus what they know. Right, right, right. Like, right. almost that yeah, 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 stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. within that. Um, yeah. And it was very, very different to what I thought it was going to be based on the first episode. Okay. But the first episode still sets up very well, like, who people are and then the shit that goes on is right. actually quite interesting. Maybe slightly over the top to a degree, but quite good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, you've spent over a year wrecking my life with Sneaky Pete. Oh, Sneaky Pete coming out. Tom, do you want to come around for coffee? I can't. I've got to stay home and think about Sneaky Pete. So, did it live up to the hype? Um, You're not sure, no. are you? Oh. But only because I say because I had to because I watched the fucking pilot yeah like almost two years ago I thought it was going to be a very different program so I was waiting mm. for a very different program to what it actually became it had like sort of some aspects of what I was expecting it to be mm. but they went a very different way with it um, and like the season is very uh, for the most part it's very closed up like it has an end mm. and then it has like one scene that sets up potential for a new se- another season so it's very so I expect it to be much more of a like long play type thing which it might actually be because of what they set up but who knows um, so yeah it's good uh, it's slightly different to what I expected it to be um, would you recommend it? I'd recommend it okay, I think cool. it's worth watching cool 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 um, I have one last question but this isn't right so I'm thinking oh he's gone to jail and it covers it later why yeah. he's gone to jail so I'm thinking it might be one of these scenarios like just tell me if I get one right but don't tell me yeah. when let me list them yeah. off right either he went to jail taking the fall for someone else that's the first generic reason someone goes to jail two he went to jail because he was betrayed either by a loved one or a crew possibly an ex-girlfriend and, and he's going to get revenge on them when he comes out 
three, he was brought down by a very, very efficient, like capable police officer who, who when he comes out, they sort of create a quasi relationship with. Do any of those cover the reasons? No. No. Okay. Cool. It's beyond it the really generic. Cool re- it has a really cool reason. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Um, it explains about halfway through, maybe. Right. Okay. <laughs> so sneaky Pete. Yeah. You kind of recommend it. It wasn't what you expected. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my girl. Yeah. All right. So previous episode, I mentioned that there are people. Uh, it probably was the last one when we talked about trailers, and I said like how I come to things. Trailers are a big part of getting me because otherwise it's people recommending, etc., etc. So I work a lot of people because they know I make films and watch things, etc. Ask me, are you watching Taboo? You'll like it. It's got Tom Hardy in, uh, and these aren't people who generally I like go to for my film looking, yeah. but enough. I'd say nearly a fucking dozen people mentioned Taboo to the point where it's like, okay, I'm going to check out Taboo. So I've checked out Taboo. There's only three episodes out of them. It's on the BBC iPlayer. Um, I think you've got like two weeks at the time of this recording, so I'm probably just under that by the time this goes up to watch the first episode if you want, or then you have to pay the BBC money for it or something. Yeah. Not that you not anywhere with your license fee. Um, it's got Sam Hardy. It's set in like the very early 19th century, 1800s. So it's not quite Victorian, but it's heading that way. And I am very conflicted about it. Uh, ask me questions. Um, well, from the intro, people are going to know that Tom Hardy walks a lot. Oh, yeah. Yes, is there does. a reason that Tom Hardy's walking so much? Oh. Like, is he like is that relevant to his character? Or is it just they like badass walking shots? Oh, okay, right. Um... <sighs> Ah, right. I don't like Taboo, but there are bits about Taboo I really, really like, okay? So, I like stories where someone comes in and already has a plan, and a lot of what they're doing, you don't know the plan, but you, like, even when you think the plan isn't working, it's working. Have you seen a film called Payback, with Mel Gibson in, um, Lucy losing it as, like, a sadistic, masochistic pretty prostitute? Sure, yeah. It's pretty fucking awesome. If not, I... I will I'm show you. Sure I've seen it, but it's been a right. while. That's like the classic example of this kind of story where you like the guy might be getting beaten up, but it's all part of a wider plan, yeah. and he knows more than he's letting on. The idea I'm gonna just tell this simple idea. The idea is Tom Hardy's dad died, and Tom Hardy, everyone thought he was dead, and he died in Africa, but he's come back, and he was to do with the East India Trade Company, which is like a big, corp- the equivalent of a big corporation yeah. in the early 19th century. And he's a soldiery type. He's got some like American kind of voodoo thing, and he's a bit haunted. And his dad, before he died, was mad. But his dad has left something in the will, which now passes to Tom Hardy's character, which everyone wants for reasons which are explained very early on. And Tom Hardy is not a happy man, and he walks around being quite kind of clever and well spoken, but also nasty to everyone, or just not putting everyone with shit. Yeah. Now, when it's like rich people, dealing with Tom Hardy, it's great. Because Tom Hardy's character in it, with the scar in his eye, he looks kind of badass, and he's, like, very, like... He, he uses, like, really, really interesting phrases and puts them all down yeah. in really casual, never-quite-rising-to-the-threat kind of way. The rest of it is awful. The, the dialogue, some of the dialogue is so fucking dire that I, like, watched it back just to make sure things were said. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, there's a sort of love interest that's one of the most poorly like executed love interest there's supposed to be all this seedy stuff going mm. on and there's supposed to be a big reason why they shouldn't be together and stuff and it's just all of it's dull like it's it's tom hardy walking places and having conversations or visions for him like on his own when he's on his own it's really dull because it thinks he's being really clever <laughs> and it's fucking not when he's walking he walks for fucking ever he's like he starts walking and and in the intro i'm gonna like we this is the first time I think we've done the intro before we've recorded the video. Yeah. Which is interesting because now I can talk about it. I showed you the walk and you were just like... Because we, we were talking about yeah. what do we want to do a little intro to. Now the, the intro will probably matter. And I showed you a bit of the walk and you're like, he's just walking. Yeah. Like, like, the, like the very first bit you showed like the wide and it's just him walking across the face. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just, just walking. Walk. Look at the strides. Stride, like, the strides are a bit big. But yeah. other than that... It's a cool walk. It's like his yeah. shoulders come... And then when I played it through, even after I cut the record because like, I've had enough, he's still fucking walking and yeah. you turn and went, okay, I kind of get what they're walking in. There's times where he's walking and then there's a fucking dog. And then the co- <laughs> he has a camera with someone that just goes, I've never known those dogs follow anyone before. You must be da-da-da. And then he walks off to somewhere fucking else. He just walks and walks and walks. And it's like, 
Ah, uh, it's 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 an hour long, and it fucking feels it. Now, when it's good, when it's these combo things happening on, or, or Tom Hardy's plan is coming into action, and occasionally spanners get thrown in, but then you're not sure if he knew they were coming or yeah. not. It's actually quite good. It's it's very gripping. The characters there, but the rest of it. It's just so fucking dull. I felt dirty watching it, and and I forced myself to watch like the third one, and I just had it on in the background while I was writing, and I had to go back because I was missing who was what, and even when I learned who was what, it didn't mean anything fucking to me. Yeah. Like it didn't change any of my feelings to it. I don't like it. I don't like. I think it's really up its own ass, and it re it thinks right. This is another thing. I watched a really good video. I think you sent it me. And it was a guy explaining why the Avengers looks dull. And it, it was looking at the colour grading of the movie, the second mm. Avengers movie. It might have been Captain America Civil War. And we're saying, like, because of the way they fade their colours, this is why it looks. And it's not visually exciting. It's got that going on. So visually, it's not very exciting. It looks yeah. great and it's really muddy and the sound that you feel the squelches and shit. But there's nothing, vi visually, there's nothing fun or enjoyable about it. It all looks a bit like they're walking underwater. Yeah. And it, just is I did nothing about it excited me but Tom Hardy's performance is excellent it's not a Tom Hardy I've seen in anything else there's elements but it's it's the Tom Hardy performance I like which is yeah. where he's been given a character and he has used that technique that Grace always tells us about and he's got right fucking into that character yeah. and he probably like when they yell cut stays in that character and the makeup and everything else that's on him is an important part of that yeah. character um, it's just it calls itself taboo and I don't know if it's a book and maybe the book like makes more thing of it there are some taboos like there's a, a race thing and a sex thing and a gender thing and, and everything else but none of it really feels like oh that needs to be there or that yeah. that's there and it doesn't know what it wants to be and someone said oh it's got a bit of a Twin Peaks weirdness to it has it fuck <laughs> has it fuck got anything like even remotely as bizarre and and um, mystical as Twin Peaks has going on it's just an annoying fucking show I, I'm, I don't think I'm going to follow it if I do it will be background and I don't care what characters I miss because I don't I'm hating on it more now I'm talking about now I'm able to express myself yeah. I've realised the good scenes do not weigh up for just how dull and fucking tedious the amount of Tom Hardy walking or looking into fireplaces is and I don't blame Tom Hardy I don't blame any of the actors because they're all delivering good performances and all the East Indian Company is all rich old white guys who have all appeared as rich old white guys in like Game of Thrones and other stuff and they're all great they're all absolutely great but there's just there's nothing to the story and it's just dull it's just a very dull show you should definitely watch it just that's I'm talking to Tom you should watch it or at least watch a couple just to see if you agree because you'll probably be like that's oh, alright it's, no, 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 it's not as bad because yeah. it's just ah, it's dull Dude, from what like the tiny bit that you show me. Well, like, I just showed you him walking. Yeah, basically. Um, and how it's shot and stuff. I can't think that, like, they would... It would actually be a thing that's got no story. But it could very well, like, just be one of those where you have to watch, like, six episodes before you go, Oh, now this makes sense. It wasn't that shit. But I did have to find spend six hours to wait for it to not be shit. Oh, oh. <laughs> there's another thing about there's another because it's an hour long and it focuses solely on Tom Hardy. You, you occasionally get like the East India Trade Company like group meetings, but apart from that, it's mostly just Tom Hardy. All the characters have like two rooms, like like there's a servant character for Tom Hardy and he gets inside the house and on the street if he's with Tom Hardy yeah. there's a couple of likely lads that are out one played by Combo from um, This Is England the neo-Nazi Scouse accented guy yeah. and he doesn't have a Scouse accent and it's weird because everything <laughs> I've seen him in even when he's meant to be like that like Gangs of New York he had a Scouse accent yeah. and now he doesn't and it's a really good accent that he does first time I've seen the guy do the really good accent I love that actor um, it's like they're on the street so they're always just in street scenes um, the rich guys have like one room that they hang around in so everyone else is just these static fuckers except yeah. for Tom Hardy who's just walking everywhere and it just 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 doesn't there's nothing gripping you on it ah oh, it's just annoying I'm annoyed at it because it should be brilliant and it's not and it doesn't it looks messy and, and it should be a really gritty show and instead it like doesn't I, I feel like like it's what the Daily Mail 
mm. would consider like people who read the Daily Mail would consider a very gripping gritty show but really it's just paint by numbers fair play okay yeah yeah well that's more negative than I thought I was going to be but yeah. there you go so uh final one lemony stick it <laughs> you join us in a tale so dark and terrible no we've done that yeah we've done that right I've watched I'm now up I've watched five episodes now the sea it's not the sea it's a lake find the lake yeah that's where I'm at yeah so no spoilers You've watched it. You've watched yeah. it all, I think. Yeah. So, I liked it. I all recommended the first it. season. Yeah, I yeah. liked it. I recommended it. You can go back and listen to that one. I think it was the last one or the one before. Yeah. You go. Let me know. What did you think of it? Right. So, one of the things that, like, you weren't sure of was the kids. Mm. Um, and in any other program, kids talking and acting the way that they do would feel awkward and horrible. Mm. <clears throat> but they perfectly match the tone of what Lemony Stick mm. is. Like, they're the smart characters and everyone else is a bumbling That's very idiot. much come across. By the point I, I'm at, it's very much like, oh, fuck it. Okay, uh, it's not really a spoiler because you watch the trailer, you'll yeah. see it. Come on, Olaf wears disguises. Really fucking obvious. Yeah. He even does dumb shit. Like, one bit someone says, uh, um... Oh, I've forgotten the name. He's a lab assistant with glasses. Um, uh, Ricardo? Is it Ricardo? It's not Ricardo, uh, but it, just one guy just says the name, and the camera goes, "I'm not." Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's so over, he's so over the top. Yeah. No one like yeah. I think right. This is dangerous because people can just go back and listen if they want, and then I'll know that I didn't say this. I think what I said was that the kids didn't bug me as much in the second episode. Yeah. And that maybe it was getting used to them. And, and yeah. so, you, and I will admit by the, f- like uh, five deep into it now. And I really, I'm not going to say I like the kids, but I don't hate the kids and they're not a deal breaker. Yeah. And the, the, they seem to have cut down on the baby subtitle yeah. joke as well. Like it was appearing like five, six times. Yeah. Now it's like two, three times. And yeah. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Um, uh, yeah, tonally, like, because it's about the kids, like mm. they set the tone perfectly. Mm. Like, they're like with the style and effort that it's filmed in it's like that way of acting is perfect and I think that they're actually really probably good actors okay um, you would have to see them in something more yeah. serious to actually go oh yes they can actually act and it's not just some awkward kids that they picked because that's how they act mm. um, but yeah uh, tonally it's great the green screen style is great um Barney's great. What's his name? Neil Patrick Harris Neil is the Patrick actor. Hyde. He's Count great. Olaf yeah. is the character. Um, He's wonderful in yeah. it. Like, you just see... I don't know if you get this. Like, I watch things and I see people having fun. Like, uh, we'll talk about this another time, but there's a film called Moonrise Kingdom mm. uh, and Wes Anderson film and there's Grand Budapest Hotel, etc., etc. Um, and, like, I, I mentioned how a series of fortunate events, I think, yeah. reminds me of that. And when you watch those, you see like Bill Murray, uh, Bruce Willis, whoever's in mm. whichever one, and they look like they're having fun. And in series of first events, it just looks like everyone is having yeah. so much fun. And they're slightly over the top characters, but they're all getting weird little things to do. Yeah. In one, I, in the last one I saw, uh, two characters were f- having like a, not quite a philosophical argument, but it was a, an argument with a very implied threat and also philosophical about plans. And they were fighting with a broom. And whoever was talking was pushing the other one while the other one was holding the broom and getting back. And then they would just 180 it. And the next person talking would push the broom. Yeah. I just, no, oh, it's good. It's really good, actually, isn't it? It's a really yeah. lovely little program. Um, the only... And it might eventually come into it in, like, a later series. The only thing that actually annoys me about it at all is the banker. Um, but it's only... Mr. Staff. Powell. Yeah, Mr. Pat's <laughs> Okay. Like, it just feels overplayed. The, mm. He coughs too much. And it's always it's always so fast. And... They, <laughs> yeah, it just annoys me. Like, it doesn't add anything. Like, I like it. Yeah, may, maybe later on he dies <laughs> very suddenly after oh, finally not being no, an idiot or Mr. something. Oh, not Mr. Poe. Not Mr. Poe. And maybe that makes not sense. Not Mr. Poe, he ain't dying. But until that happens, 
him having an extremely annoying cuff that comes out of nowhere at very awkward moments for absolutely no reason. It's just annoying. Not Mr. Pearl. But the rest of them yeah, is oh. fine. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's it. I'm happy with that. So both of us Why really like Susan. had hooks for hands. This guy obviously has hands for hands. <laughs> <laughs> the guy just fake hands on his hooks. And then he starts eating peaches in a really like, awful way that by scooping them in. Yeah, um, I'm happy with that. Yeah. So, to retrospect this one before we say goodbye. Sneaky Pete, not what you expected from the pilot, but still, still definitely worth watching. Watch to Boo, I've... I've cemented my dislike while talking about it. I came into it like, I like this much, but I feel dirty about it. It's okay. I don't feel it's okay, yeah. actually. I feel it's very not... It's just... It's drab and a waste. But both of us, series of unfortunate events, both of us now are fucking saying, watch fucking it. watch it. It's on yeah. Netflix if, if you want to watch it through like legitimate means or just find it. It's fucking great. Yeah. It's really fucking good. And that's it. Yeah. Thank you, Sam for doing that yeah no worries uh, you know I'll get this edited very quickly I'm sure you will yeah and uh, this will be up shortly after in about maybe an hour after we've recorded it yeah, yeah. alright thanks for listening <laughs> bye, bye.